I had such a dream last night. I was floating above the trees, with my lips connected to those of a beautiful figure. Whose lips? Were they my lips? I'm not sure he really likes me. Mr. Keats knows he cannot like you. He has no living and no income. He was a dreamer. Have you got John Keats's poem book? My sister has met the author, and she wants to read it for herself to see if he's an idiot or not. She was a realist. All I wear, I've sewn and designed myself. Men's room, out. Poet's got to do a bit of writing. My stitching has more merit and admirers than your two scribblings put together. And I can make money from it. But every word he wrote inspired the rapture of first love. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. This fall, from Academy Award winner Jane Campion, comes a romance that would live forever. I get anxious if I didn't see her. When I don't hear from him, it's as if I've died. As if the air is sucked out from my lungs. Mr. Keats is very brilliant. Was it successful? You taught me to love. You never said, only the rich. I must warn you of the trap that you're walking into, John. You'll lose your freedom permanently. For what? You are already the source of so much gossip. Apparently there is nothing I can do to persuade you of the gravity of the situation. We must cut the threads. No, I can't. I never will. You know I would do anything. It is a game. It is a game to her. It is a holiness to the heart's affection. You know nothing of that. Based on the true story of a brilliant poet and the bright star who was his shining light. I almost wish we were butterflies and lived but three summer days. Three such days with you I could fill with more delight than 50 common years could ever contain. <laughs>